Alright guys, welcome to episode 6 of Switch Tutorials. So we've covered quite a few things so far. In episode 1, we looked at jailbreaking the Switch. In episode 2, we installed games. Episode 3, we installed emulators. Episode 4 was about installing mods using Layered FS. Episode 5, cheats, how to install cheats and find your own cheats within your games. All that's covered in the previous episode, so check the playlist link in the description if you want to check out any of those other episodes. So in this one, we're going to be looking at uh, different homebrew apps that you can install to improve the Switch's functionality, give it more functionality really, so you can do more than just using it to play games. Also more customization and quality of life improvements as well. And all of the apps that we're going to install in this video can be accessed from the Homebrew App Store. You can download them all from the Homebrew App Store. There's no need to use the computer to download any. Although, of course, you can go to switchbrew.com slash app store to download them on the PC and install them manually to your SD card if you wish. So I'm going to show you all the apps here and download them all. And then I'm going to go through one by one and show you how to use them. So the first thing is customization. So if we head down to tools and select the NX themes installer and you can download this and this allows you to install custom themes that can customize your home screen, your settings menu, uh, background images, the lock screen, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty useful. So when you download the actual theme installer, you need to actually download some themes for it, which you'll find in a theme in the themes section of the Homebrew App Store. And then you can just download whichever ones uh, you like. So let's just uh, pick one of these and download it. And there we go. So we've got a theme and the theme installer. So the next uh, thing, if we go into tools and then scroll down until you find NX shell and download this, I've already showed this off in episode one. So I'll only briefly uh, mention it here. It's basically a file manager. So you can copy and paste files and move files around on your SD card uh, without having to connect up to the computer. So it's a handy homebrew app. We're also going to download Browser NX, which is a web browser for your Nintendo Switch. Then we're also going to download NX Play, which is a music player app. And we're also going to download FTPD, an FTP server app. And finally, we're going to download uh, P Play which is a video player app for the Switch as well. And I'll show you guys how to use all of this stuff once we have them all installed. In fact, another good one to get as well is Checkpoint right here, which is great for backing up and restoring saved game files. You can install that too. So there's all of our apps installed. So if I head back to the Homebrew menu, you can see we've got quite a few different applications installed here. So. Um, I'm not going to go over NX Shell again because I've already gone over it in episode one. Um, like I said, it's a file manager for your SD card that you can access on the Switch. Um, that, so NX Themes Installer for customization. So let's install a theme here. So if I go on NX Themes Installer, now when you first run this, it will extract the home menu and a bunch of other assets. So that might take a, you know, a 30 seconds, something like that. And then it will take you here. From here, you just go to Themes, select your theme. Press the Y button to select what sections of the theme you want to install. So if you want the theme to be applied for your apps, your home screen, your lock screen, and um, your settings as well. And then you just press the plus button to install it. Now, once it's installed, you have to reboot the switch in order for the theme to be applied. But as you can see here, I've already got mine set. So once you reboot, you'll have your theme on here. And as you can see, it's completely custom. You've got the game showing up down here at the bottom. You've got your status icons now in the bottom left. You've got your system settings in the top right. You've got your uh, clock and avatar in the top left. So yeah, completely custom. And if I head into system settings, you can see we've got a custom background on here as well. Now, if the theme isn't displaying correctly, or some of the text is like really difficult to read, then you may not have just downloaded a bad theme. You might have to go into themes and system settings and change this from whatever you were currently set to, to the opposite. So if I was set to basic white, you can see that none of these settings are, are easy to see in the menu. So this theme is clearly designed for the basic black theme because everything is a lot clearer now. But you might download a theme that's for basic white 
So just uh, if you're having that kind of issue, just head into the themes here and switch from basic white to basic black or basic black to basic white then hopefully your theme will display correctly. All right, so that is how you can customize your switch using the NX theme installer or themes installer. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is FTPD, but before I go into that, I'm just gonna run NX play real quick uh, because I need it to create some files. So no audio files found at switch slash NX play. Okay, so now I know the folder to put my audio files for, the, for that to work. So yeah, because I'm gonna do that using FTPD so this application is basically a FTP server. So when I run it here, it just gives me the IP address of the switch with colon 5000 next to it, which is the port number. So I can connect to this on any other device on my home network and swap files back and forth between that device and the switch. So rather than having to unplug the SD card and plug it into the computer, every time I want to copy files over and having to switch the switch off and then switch it back on again and re-inject the payload, you can skip all of that and just swap the files around while the switch is still on over your network. So in order to do that, if I head back over to the computer here and you can download a FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP. If you're on Windows 10 or probably Windows 8 or 8.1, you can just add it as a network location in Windows. So you can either right click down here and go to add network location, or you can click up on computer and click add a network location. And then you just click next, next. So you type in FTP colon double slash and then as you can see, it's already entered there for me. Um, but you have to type in the IP address of your switch with the colon 5000 just as it appears on the FTPD app and then click next, log on anonymously. And then for the name of the network, you can just call it switch or something like that and finish. So now all my switch files show up on my computer and I can copy files back and forth while the switch is still on and I don't have to keep removing the SD card every time. So for example, if I go into the switch folder here and then I go into the NX play folder, I can copy a file from my computer and like an MP3 file. So I've got one of the MP3 files I used as background music for one of my videos probably like six months ago or something. I should really clear out my downloads more often. Uh, but there we go. So I copied a file in here. So now if I go back to my, or if I go back to the switch, you can see all this information popping up of, from the file transfer. But if I go back and then launch NX Play again, which previously said there was no audio files, but I've transferred an audio file. And there it is. Loading audio. And there we go. We've got the audio playing right there. So as you can see, that works. You can copy files from your computer to your SD card and from your SD card back to your computer and edit files um, without having to remove the SD card. And also, this is NX Play. It's just a media player for your Switch, but it's basically an MP3 player, but it also plays FLV files, OGG, um, WAV files, all that kind of form, all those different audio formats and you can use it to, you know, listen to audiobooks or podcasts or uh, music, whatever. Uh, so you can use your, your Switch for, for that as well, which is pretty useful. So there we go. So let me just exit out of this. Okay, so next we have P-Play, which is a video player app. So I launch this. Uh, if I click the two dots to go up directory, up directory, so we get into the root directory. So basically this will just play any video files. I mean, obviously not all video files are supported, but I think quite a lot are like MKV and MP4 and AVI formats, I think are all supported. So you can use this to play, you know, movies, TV shows, whatever you want. And the videos don't have to be in any specific folder. You can browse the SD card here to find any video files. Um, I just put, you know, I would just put them in like a folder called videos or movies or something like that. Um, so I've got an episode of The Expanse here, and this is 1.1 gigabytes, so I'm actually not sure how well it's going to handle files that size, but uh, let's see if it actually plays. Oh, well there you go, it plays no problem. So actually let me, I should probably skip forward, oh, and spoilers by the way, um, I'm probably going to blur this though, because I'll probably get claimed for copyright. It's a good show though, it has my endorsement. So yeah, as you can see, if you press down, you can look at all the, you've got all these different options. So you can pause, 
uh, pausing playback, you can resume, you can uh, go back, you can go forward, you can stop. There's also other options. If you press right, then it's got um, audio, video. Actually, I don't know what these options are. Okay, so it just gives you information about what type of file it is, what type of audio it's using, subtitles, no subtitle streams found in media. So if you have subtitles, then you can, uh, I think that actually works and you can enable subtitles. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, and it gives you information about the video there, you know, the video format, 1920 by 1080, 40 kilohertz audio, all that kind of information, size, duration, it's all there. So pretty useful. It's pretty good. So finally, we've got the browser. So browser NX, and this is just the web browser. In fact, I think it's the same. Oh, yeah, that happens. So just like running Nintendo 64 games on RetroArch, you have the same problem with browser NX. Um, it will just crash the whole system if you run it without full permissions. So the homebrew menu needs to have the full permissions. So to get the full permissions, as I've shown in episode three, you need to launch a game and hold down the R button when launching the game so that it will actually launch you into the homebrew menu. And then you can run browser NX and it should hopefully uh, work. There we go. So I believe this is the same web browser that the Switch actually uses. Um, only difference is you can just load it straight from the homebrew menu now rather than having to enter the switch brew DNS settings. Continue to Google and there we go. So as you can see this works absolutely fine. You can go to YouTube. No problem. Obviously it's a slow crappy browser which you know pretty much all of these browsers on game consoles are terrible but that is just how it is. But at least you can access it here uh, through this uh, through this kind of bypass method. So there you go, you can do web browsing, you can play movies, TV shows, you can listen to podcasts, audiobooks, uh, music, and all that kind of stuff. Plus customize your Switch with NX Themes installer and make it much easier to copy files back and forth between your console and your computer or your phone or any other device on your home network. So yeah, those are a few handy homebrew applications. If you have any more handy homebrew applications that you think people uh, might find useful, leave them in the comments because obviously you know, I haven't gone through and checked every single app in the homebrew app store to find out, you know, what other interesting applications are there. So I'm sure there's plenty of others that are going to be useful. Uh, I did mention Checkpoint as well, actually. Uh, this can be used to back up your save files. So I can select a game like Wolfenstein and press the L button to back up and say yes. And then I can name it something or just go with the default name and it backs up all my save files in there. So now all my saves for Wolfenstein are in there. And if I want to back that up to my computer, then of course I can just hop on uh, FTP and then switch over to my computer again, go back here, just refresh, make sure it's connected. And then if I go to the switch folder and then go to the checkpoint folder, You've got saves in here. I think this was the title ID. So if I look in here, yep, there it is. So it's got all my saves backed up and I can just copy this entire folder somewhere to my computer for safekeeping. You can back up your saves so that if something catastrophic happened, like you accidentally deleted your save data by mistake, then you have a backup somewhere else that you can restore using Checkpoint. And you can even take saves from uh, other people's consoles that people have posted, you know, like a 100% completed save or a modded save uh, that you can download from the internet and put it on there and restore it to your game so that you can load that save file. Uh, I've actually covered that in a separate video. I'll link it uh, in the cards in the top right hand corner and uh, possibly in the description. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. We still have a few more things to cover. I'm gonna be covering how to restore your backed up NAND so you can get back on Nintendo servers on original firmware if you ever wanna go back. And also how to update your firmware version to a higher firmware version. Cause as you can see, I'm still on version um, 7.0.1. So if you wanna update to a higher firmware version, um, and get on the latest firmware. I'm going to show you how to safely do that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next ones. Check out the playlist link in the description for the previous episodes, and I'll see you guys in the next video.